For our next interview, Simon Ward, fellow producer and group CEO and founder of ITG, who I'm absolutely delighted to be producing with in association, is speaking with Dr. Silla Elworthy, the founder of the Business Plan for Peace. Dr. Elworthy is a three-time Nobel Peace Prize nominee for her work with the Oxford Research Group, specialising in development of effective dialogue between nuclear arms policymakers and their critics. She now leads the Business Plan for Peace, which aims to prevent violent conflict and create peace worldwide. Please welcome to Studio A, Simon Ward and Dr. Silla Elworthy. Over to you, Simon. Silla, absolute privilege to speak to you today. Could you tell us about your career and tell us how it's led to, build, to the business plan for peace? Well, <clears throat> ever since I was 13, I had no choice. I realized that I had to devote my life to trying to stop people killing each other. Um, when I was 18, I went to Algiers, worked in North Africa, South Africa. And by the time it was the early 80s, I realized that nuclear weapons were the problem, the real problem, and it was looming. The Cold War was um, building up very, very fast. Um, and so I went to New York and led a delegation of women to the UN conference on negotiations on nuclear weapons. After three weeks, nothing much was being achieved. And I was strap hanging on a tram on Broadway and a voice in my head said, you're talking to the wrong people. You've got to talk to the people who make the decisions on nuclear weapons. And I thought, who are they? Um, and then it became clear, you know, the people who build the weapons, the people who commission them, the people who fire them and so on. And so I went home, set up a research group round my kitchen table, two people, me, and we started to research the whole question of nu nuclear weapons decision making. Fast forward, four years we produced our first book and then we started gathering these individuals from all the then five nuclear nations around not even around a table sitting without their jackets on with no formal procedures actually listening to one another and over a period of about 20 years working in China in France in the United Nations in Geneva but also in Russia and in America we were able to, through these off-the-record discussions, formulate the basis of two treaties. In the early 2000s, I handed that on to other very competent people, and I realized that so many interesting things were happening right at the other end of the spectrum, namely at grassroots level. So I sent out a, a young researcher to find out how many effective locally-led peace initiatives are there all over the world and he came back with 250 so we started the peace direct organization which now serves peace initiatives in 28 when i say peace in peace initiatives i mean local people organizing to stop killing and that's incredibly demanding and incredibly dangerous and incredibly exciting and so that's what i did until 20 18 when I realized and and that was thriving and I could hand it on to others so I'm a sort of serial starter of NGOs and handing them over when they work and I think it was in 2018 I realized that something was coming towards us that would need everything we had in the way of human capacities for tolerance for listening for getting together to work together for peace um, and that's when I started the business plan for peace because if you add up the numbers um, for instance I traced 25 effective initiatives to actually stop armed conflict um, and I extended what it cost to run them over 10 years wrote it up in a book called the business plan for peace and contrasted that with what we as a global population spend on war and it was very very shocking I, I can imagine yeah, yeah I can imagine so that's how that's how the business plan for peace started and I can tell you more about it as we go along as we go along okay 
peace building perspective today, mm -hmm. where are we in the in the for humanity working together? Where are what is the? Well, there are there are lots of very good studies that show that humanity is behaving towards each other better as time goes on. But the Ukraine war is so disastrous, so destructive, not only of young lives of men and women on both sides, but also to the environment. It, it, it's just the collapse of everything we think we've been building. And I think we made a terrible mistake 20 years ago not to realise what could have prevented it. And that was the humiliation of the then Soviet Union and the former Soviet countries being absorbed into NATO. That was humiliation, and humiliation is very often the d driver of violence. Yeah, so that's that's feeding back in today, and and, that, and that's part of the the reason for the conflict. Uh, it, it absolutely. Yeah, um, and you can see how it has infected Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. Yeah, <coughs> and it's what is driving him at a terribly deep level. Yeah, and. Um, and we should and could have prevented it. Yeah, and we should, of course, keep trying. Never stop. We have to keep trying. Exactly, and we, people we are trying all over Europe. Yeah, we have to keep trying. Can you give us a concrete example of peacekeeping and you know, something that inspires you that you said, you know, this is a real thing that's, that, that's really made me sit up and think? Well, close to home, Northern Ireland, as you know, for years and years, decades, there's been terrible strife in Northern Ireland, murders, vigilantes, you name it, and thousands have died. Um, but what happened towards the end of the 90s was a concerted effort led by many very good people, including um, uh, the American Senator George Mitchell, who came and he said, I will listen for as long as it takes. And that's what solved the problem. Um, and now, and we must not ignore the role of women in bringing that about from the very beginning, the women's marches. But women played a very significant part, including Mary Robinson, the president of Southern, or the main island. And <coughs> uh, I think that what we're witnessing today, 24, 25 years later, is the success of a peace detailed, painstaking peace negotiation, beautifully led, that was able to bring that about. Fabulous. I mean, that's a, a, a fabulous example. Mm. I'm a businessman and I have a, you know, a, a, a global business. How can we help and how can we bring your thoughts and processes into the workplace in a practical way? Oh, what a great question, because I'm absolutely convinced that in this day and age, business has a huge role, if not the role, to play in building peace from the bottom up. Um, why? Because uh, businesses stand to lose such a lot from war. I mean, if you look at the losses that companies who've had to close all their businesses in, in Russia, in, in Poland and Ukraine, and also, if you look at the companies that have made a fortune out of war. So I'm really interested in what companies can now do, uh, standing on the sidelines, if you like, and looking at this conflict. One of the things they can do is build the skills of peace in their teams from the bottom up. Um, for built into the culture of the business. Yes, building them into the culture of the business. You're absolutely right. Five years ago, um, I had a premonition that COVID was coming towards us. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was going to need everything we could, we could devolve and, and um, share with others in terms of the skills that build peace. So I sat down and wrote for two weeks and it, came, it became an online course, and it's called The Mighty Heart in Action. And what that enables businesses to do is to give their staff from the bottom up, from the ground up to the boardroom, which um, one of our um, big companies, H&M, has been doing, 
and enabling them, first of all, to listen. We all think we're good listeners. Most of us are not. But if you put people through an exercise to test their listening skills, they come out looking shocked, right surprised. with shock. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You've got it. They're all talking, not listening. Uh, all talking, not listening. So if, you, if we really learn to listen, if I listen to you carefully enough that I can repeat back to you what you said, then we're in business. Then, we're then we really are in business. <clears throat> because then I can understand you and you can do the same and understand me. And then we're, we can make a compromise, we can agree, we can make a deal that will stick. Um, but there's all sorts of other skills that need doing. One is to deal with our inner critic. Most of us have this imposter syndrome that knocks us out in the middle of the night and threatens us with all we've done wrong. Um, and we need to transform that inner critic into a, a source of um, inspiration and life, and that's possible. We can teach that. Um, we also have to learn to um, take the time to stand our ground on an issue we really care about. You know, often when people are passionate about something, they put other people's backs up. But if we prepare carefully, we can stand up with our voice from the heart and really talk about what we care about so that other people get it. Um, we can also uh, learn to turn our anger. You know, if, if, you, if you're very angry with somebody and you spray it out at them, you, you cause irreparable harm, probably a feud for life. But if you take that uh, anger into yourself and let it be a fuel for change so that it gets you up next morning to do what's necessary, to give you the energy for change, that's a phenomenal skill to have. And you, this is something can be taught and trained yeah. and, and do you believe you know, that's, a, that's the way through business to help businesses work together internally as well as yes. externally? It's, and it's just one of the ways, and I, I, from talking to you earlier, I think your companies are doing that. Yeah, we, we try very hard to, 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 to live by the principles mm. um, that, that, you, that you preach, which is, which is absolutely amazing. And you know, we, we do. How, how does a company access your program? How do, we, how do we get there? How do we get to this well, amazing just, way of, of thinking and being? Well, you can Google the Business Plan for Peace. You can look up the whole spectrum of the course of the Mighty Heart in Action. Um, and you can get in touch with us, with my team and we can come and talk it through with you and see what's, what's actually useful to tailor to your company um, using these 10 principles that we, that we know work. Uh, and uh, practical, any real practical, fabulous examples of it working with, with businesses? I'll uh, tell you, um, H&M have uh, stores all over Germany and Poland and they see a lot of refugees in the stores and because H&M chose to introduce this course from boardroom right down to shop floor um, the shop floor people know how to practice the mighty heart so they saw these refugees coming into the shop looking a bit bewildered and so they went up to them and said what do you need and the refugees said well we've now got a roof over our heads and we're very grateful for that but we want to be useful so they cooked up a scheme whereby they got hold of the warehouses at H&M, got them to send bales of heavy material down. The refugees made shopping bags out of these materials, which were used for customers to buy when they bought their clothes, five euros a piece. Customers got it, brought the bags back to resell them, and this provided income for the refugees and usefulness. Yeah, fabulous. So that's just one small Just one, example. and I'm sure there are absolutely uh, hundreds and hundreds. We've got a little bit, just a little bit of time left. You mentioned at the start the, how young you were when this, you had this calling, this, mm. that's very young. What, what, what was the inspiration? What, oh, what I was, was I was 13. I was watching a grainy old black and white TV in my parents' living room. And I saw Soviet tanks crashing into Hungary, killing people not not much older than me and I rushed upstairs and started packing my suitcase and my mum came up and said what are you doing I said I'm going to Budapest I didn't know where Budapest was and she said what for and I said there's something so terrible happening there I have to go now 
and she said don't be so silly and I burst into tears and she got it bless her she said okay I understand you're only 13 but you have to be trained if you're going to be any use and if you just unpack your suitcase I will see that you get trained and she did what a, it's a beautiful way to, 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 to finish the conversation which I could go on for hours just talking to you it's been an mm -hmm. absolute uh, inspiration to actually to, 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 to speak to you I think shamelessly we need to get people to you to your website so people can see some real change um, and I've to have a look through and, and see some of the amazing programs that you do mm. so thank you very much for your time it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for a lovely lovely chance to talk thank you